Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I thank God for this book, don't you? Amen. Yeah. Hopefully you got your book with you tonight. I, if you don't, maybe look and find you one. But I thank him for this book, being able to uh, come back to it and dig and see what exactly he'd have us to study and read and pray and preach. And, and this, this is where our life is at. Praise God. It's in the voice of God, which this book is. Uh, I believe that in my heart. This is really God speaking to us. And maybe we talked about it this morning. He can speak in different ways. But I thank him for speaking to us through this word. Amen. I, anytime, especially when, as a new convert, maybe I told this before. But we're going to go to the book of uh, maybe Second Kings. Uh, but as a new convert and just trying to learn about the Lord and what I'm supposed to do. And, and so many times I come to this book and still today, I've not outgrown it, don't get me wrong, but uh, being able to come back to this book, Brother June, and have a question uh, that I laid before the Lord. And, and as I begin to maybe read through this book, maybe in the middle of the night or throughout the day, and, and God would speak to my heart and he'd give me the answer. It may not necessarily have been the answer I was looking for, uh, praise God, but he gave me the answer he, he knew would be best for me. So I'm thankful that I can carry this book around. You know, there's a lot of countries they can't do that, Brother Donnie. They, uh, they'd search your car and make sure you didn't have this. If it didn't have power, why are they worried about it? You know, that's what I say. If it, if it ain't nothing to it, if it's just made up and, and fictitious, why are they so worried about us having this book? Praise the Lord. Uh, this book is my life. Amen. I'm thankful for the, uh, the book that I've got. And this, what I told you, was my sons. I've got some maybe that uh, even as a... Uh, you know, raised up, really wasn't in a, a Christian home, but I've still got a book that my mother and father gave me for Christmas, 1987. Well, it was a long time after that before I got saved. I still look at that book. That means a lot to me. I thank God that they thought enough of me to get me a Bible. Amen. You know, we didn't necessarily go to church, but they thought enough to get me a Bible. And I thank God for that. And I cherish these. You know, we all have some that uh, maybe, and I don't know why we're here, but different Bibles that mean something to us. I've got the, uh, the family Bible there in my living room that my mother and father had. And, and I just thank God for giving us more than one of these, not just to keep in our card and never look at, but uh, he gives us plenty of these to read. So I thank God for that. But uh, tonight in Second Kings uh, chapter 4, <clears throat> I'm sure you've read this before like everything else I preach, but I've never preached from here before. And uh, uh, we read it about a week or so ago, and I've not been able to get away from it. And the Lord... I began to de deal with my heart yesterday on it. So if you'd like to stand for the reading of God's Word, be in much prayer tonight uh, that I be in the will of God as I bring this message. I thought I was going to preach it this morning, but you know the Lord's seen fit to do otherwise. So in 2 Kings chapter 4, uh, starting here in verse 38, and we'll just read down to verse 41, and, and then we're going to pray and get into the message. And the Bible says, And Elisha came again to Gilgal, and there was a dearth in the land. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. And he said unto his servant, set on the great pot, a seething pot, a seething pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered thereof wild gourds, his lap full, and came and shred them into the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. So they poured out for the men to eat. And it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage, that they cried out and said, O thou man of God, there is a death in the pot. And they could eat, and they could not eat thereof. But he said, Then bring meal, and he cast it into the pot, and he said, Pour out for the people that they may eat, and there was no harm in the pot. Now, uh, let's bind together as a family and pray one more time that God be able to uh, give the increase tonight. Father in heaven, oh Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. No other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. But we come to you tonight, God. Uh, knowing that you're able to do all things exceedingly abundantly what we ask or even think. God, we're asking tonight that you'd move and uh, you'd move me out of the way. God, you'd be able to come down and, and speak to your people tonight. God, speak to my heart and please move me out of the way as quick as you can and, and let me get out of the way, Lord, as soon as you'd have me to quit. And Father, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. Let's say his name together in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing for the reading of God's word. And uh, just a thought that maybe the Lord give me and we'll try to get into this. I'm sure you've uh, read it before, but as I begin to uh, maybe read this and God begin to uh, reveal a few things to me, we know that uh, the man of God, he came back to Gilgal and as we begin to read it, maybe that's where he started out at. He, him and Elijah went on to, uh, praise God, to the place where the mantle fell down and we know that. And, and since that time, Elijah's done many things. Uh, uh, we see just in this chapter what he's done to uh, maybe 
maybe fill the vessels and, and maybe to bring the son back to life and many things that this man of God has done. And, and But we get to this part and he comes back to the land and he sees there's a famine in the land. There's a, a lot of famines we read about in the Bible and it seemed like that was common nature. You know, you'd, you'd have a, a time of feast and you have a time of famine and uh, we've seen that in our own life and you pray for me, but uh, we've seen that in our own life. Maybe even with your garden, uh, there's times that you have a, a whole lot more than you can handle and then uh, the next year it really don't do that good. But God knows exactly what he's doing. But I begin to see this man of God. He came back and he seen that there was those that, uh, that was having a, a famine, praise God. They was needing food. And he said, I want you to feed these. And this is a church that he's talking to. If you begin to look, I believe this is a, a, the church people that he's talking to initially. And he says, I want you to go out and, and fix them some soup, fix them some stew, some, uh, some pottage. And, and praise God, it, he had a, an intention to be able to feed them, to uh, give them strength. But uh, when it became time for man to uh, work on that soup, they became a problem. I like to preach to you tonight. You better call poison control. You better call poison control. And we begin to look at this, and the man of God, he told him to go and, and to be able to make this pottage, and the one went out, and he wanted to season it his way. You know what? We find in this world the man of God gets up, and, and maybe the singers get up, and, and they begin to do what God tells them to do, but somebody wants to season it their way. And, and this man went out, and, and maybe even thinking he was doing God's will, but as he went out and seen these gourds, and, and it said he shred them up. Ain't that the way the devil does? He like to take something real big and shred it up in little pieces and feed you, friend. I tell you, better call poison control. The church is dying. Praise God, the world is dying. We're eating this thing of this world that's killing us inside. Hey, we ain't the same as we used to be as a body. Uh, we see it falling away. The Bible said there'll be a great falling away, friend. I'm telling you, we're in that time today. Praise the Lord. You better call poison control. As the devil comes in, I can just see him with that gourd. I just like the devil does. Taking something large and trying to shred it up in little pieces and mix it into what the man of God said. Mix it into the food that God really wants you to eat. He's got something good nourishment for you. He's the bread of life, friend. Praise God. He's a drink when you're thirsty. But the world would love to come in and poison it. And that's what happened here, did it not? Hey, we look at it. I believe it's good to begin with. He just wanted to add a little bit something to it. You know what I see, friend? I see the church world dabbling in the world. I see the world dabbling in the church. Praise God. I like to see somebody satisfied with the Lord and hungry after Him. We see so many places. I begin to I maybe go a few places. And the other day, I, if you think this world ain't dying, friend, just go to Walmart and sit down and watch people go in and out. You can watch them go in and out and you think, my Lord, where am I, la- where am I at today, friend? Surely this ain't where we live, man. The world's dying, friend. They're trying to poison the church so there ain't no power. The same way they tried to do here. Praise the Lord. Let's call poison control. <laughs> what does poison control do? <laughs> well, I read this a little bit about it last night, and it said you can call them 24-7. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You can call them any time. <laughs> when you realize you're getting poisoned, when you realize you've digested something that the, the Lord didn't intend for you to digest, you can call on Him any time. <laughs> it said that most of the time when you call them, praise the Lord, it said most of the time when you call poison control, they can talk you through the problem. Most of the time they can tell you what to do. Every once in a while you'll have to go to the hospital. Maybe you'll have to go the extra mile. But if you just call on the Lord tonight, I believe he can help the poison, don't you? Praise the Lord. I believe he can help what you've been poisoned with. The things that the Lord tries to give us, the devil loved to take, take away from that. He loved to put poison inside of something that the man's done. He loved to put poison inside of something that God intended. Why do you think we got so many doctrines tonight? As I begin to talk about the book, and I point right there where my Bible says, but why do you think we got so many Bibles tonight, friend? Why do you think we got so many songs tonight? It ain't just to reach out to a new crew. It's to pollute the word, the word of God and to pollute the things that God intended for us to eat. I believe in the book of Revelations, he talks about that we take this book. And as we eat this book, it's sweet to our mouth, he said, but it's bitter to my stomach. Hey, Amen. Sometimes the thing that God tells me to do, it may sound good to me, but when I begin to dig in, it gets a little hard for me. But you know what? God knows best for your life. And God knows best for my life. And he's telling you tonight, call poison control. Hey, call poison control. I've been in that situation before where uh, maybe I had to call them for different situations or, or different things. Somebody's drank something they shouldn't drink or, or maybe took a pill they shouldn't have took and, and you call them and they stay calm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm glad I got a God that stays calm, ain't you? Praise the Lord. When I get all worked up in myself and, and think I don't know what I'm going to do, my God's still calm tonight, friend. My God still knows what to do when I've been poisoned by this world. The world loved to poison the church. They love to do it. You just get out there, pray and ask God to show you. 
Pray and ask God to show you what's going on in the church. Pray and ask God to show you what's going on in the world. You'll see the poison, praying. Praise God, the poison begins to eat on the inside. And you know what it does after it eats on the inside? It begins to show up on the outside. I seen a man one time, maybe the, uh, the Russians had uh, maybe poisoned him or maybe stuck him with a needle or something trying to kill him. And I seen a picture of him, and you could tell something was wrong with him. His face was all messed up and looked like the flesh was falling off of him. Praise God, the world would love to do you like that. Just walk up to you just like this and stab you with some of the world's poison. They'd love to feed you full of that. I say, God, would you help? God, would you help me tonight? I know that you're there 24-7. Surely to goodness, if I can pick up a phone and call poison control, I can call the Lord tonight, and he'll help me. Hey, Lord, I didn't know it. The Bible said just a little bit, eleven. Just a little bit of leaven to limit the whole love. Just a little bit of poison to hurt you. Just a little bit of this world to hurt you, friend. That's why the world likes the devil in the church. You've seen it before. I praise the Lord. God began to show me that. As the church begins to dabble in the world, hey, I'm not talking about not reaching out to sinners. Praise God, we got to do that or we ain't saved. Uh, we got to reach out to sinners. But we don't bring in their doctrine, praise God, and put it in the house of God. There's certain things that don't belong in the house, amen? And the world knows that. They love to poison what God gives you. The world would love to poison the anointing that God has given you. You've seen it before. Somebody had an anointing to sing. Somebody had an anointing to preach. And for some reason, they begin to be drawn out. We've all seen this. They begin to be drawn out. They're poisoned by the world and they don't know it. But you know the best thing about this? Somebody said, hey, there's death in the pot. Hey, somebody warning you tonight, friend, that this world will kill you. They knew if we keep taking this, it's going to kill us. We're already starting to feel the effects of it. Are you feeling the effects of it, friend? Is your family feeling the effects of this poison that love to get inside your veins? Praise. It's more than skin deep, friend. It's a heart problem. It's a heart problem tonight. That poison gets to the heart. Begins to slow the pump down. Praise God. Oh, Lord, help us tonight. We work. It seems like so many. I've been around them uh, for the last couple of weeks, and I see it. It breaks my heart. The same thing I felt this morning when I was talking to you and we was trying to pray. I begin to feel such a weight for those people. Look around, friend. Look, where's white? The church is full no more. White, the church is full down the road. White, the church is full here. We're poisoned. And the world's a feeding it to us. And we're taking it one bite at a time. This rocking the old baby to sleep, ain't it? This rocking the old baby to sleep. Just rocking him away. And he's just going to sleep. I say one time when I prayed not long ago, I say we make a big jump and get out of the devil's hands. Just like when mama used to try to put that baby to sleep, she'd rock him for an hour. Oh, I about got him. I about what the devil's saying to the church. I about got you. I about got you rocked to sleep. Praise God, you ain't kicking no more. You ain't fighting it no more. You're taking it. You're accepting whatever I'm giving you. And I can see that little baby as that mama would rock it. And she'd be in that rocking chair and think, I'm getting ready to lay him down. By the time you go lay him down, that rascal will jump and start crying. Hey, I'd like to jump tonight, wouldn't you? I'd like to jump one more time and say, hey, there's pl- praise God, there's death in the pot tonight. There's death in the pot. Hey, I don't want to be the one that just keeps eating it to you. Praise God, if I eat something rotten, if I sit down at the table and I eat something rotten, I'm not going to say, hey, honey, won't you try this? I'm going to say, this is bad. You better take it somewhere else. I don't want no death to you, but the devil seems like he's good at this. He's good at feeding to the church people. He's good at feeding to us, ain't he? And we'll mix it in with the pot. Now, if the whole thing would have been poisoned, then maybe we'd have noticed that. But he's so good at shredding it up. I can't get away from that. He's so good at shredding it up. We've read that story and some of you probably know more about it than I do. But you know that when Jim Jones came out, I believe as far as I know, he was a man of God. He was preaching the word of God. But he began to get to a place and he exhausted himself up. He began to get to a place, and you know the first thing he wanted to do? He wanted to take the people far away from help as he could. He wanted to take the people to another country, thinking he could get them as far away from help as he could. You know what the devil loved to do to you? Praise God, when he starts to feed you that poison, he loved to take you as far away from the Lord as he can. He'll start off real slow. He'll start off real slow, but you know the best thing you can do is to holler out, there's death in the pot. There's death in the pot. Don't do that. I'd like to have more of the warning the world. I'd like to hear more preaching, wouldn't you? I'd like to hear somebody stand up and say, don't take for that. Don't partake in that. Do thyself no harm, says. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you tonight, God wants to help you. He's trying to warn you. There's death in the pot. Just because somebody else is eating it. I know how we are as people. We'll get back to Jim Jones in a minute. I know how we are as people. We start having a dinner, and we're Planet trying to do that, you pray. Hey, praise God, you have a dinner. Some people say, Who fixed that? <laughs> who do you know who fixed that? <laughs> hey, we're all guilty of that. Don't worry, Donnie didn't fix it. Hey, who fixed that? 
I'd like, I just like to know, who, before I get a plate tonight, I'd like to know who fixed that. We're all carnal, ain't we? All judges, one some another self. Well, you know what we're worried about? Where it came from. I tell you where a lot of this stuff comes from in the world, friend. It comes straight from the devil, and he's trying to kill you tonight. Praise the Lord. Even that man, I don't know. This man that shredded that, I don't know that he realized what he was doing. It said he didn't know. I don't think he knew. Maybe y'all know better than that, but I don't think he really knew. I think he was just trying to help. And a lot of times we try to help in our own self. If I try to help in the flesh of Donnie, I'm going to hinder the church. Amen. If I try to do it my way and I try to do things the way I think it needs to be done, I'm going to hurt somebody. Maybe this man said, well... If we could just season a little bit. If we could just put a little bit of season on this, it tastes good. Ain't that what the world's saying? Praise God. The world said go on to church on Sunday morning and go on back home and stay home and watch TV all day long. And then towards the evening, go ahead and get you a couple beers. You'll be all right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Go ahead. And, that's what the world tells you, friend. But God says stay away from that. There's death in the pods. Ain't that what the world's saying? The world says you can go to church on Sunday morning. Hey, praise God. Go to church. Hey, pat yourself on the back that you got up and you took your children to church. Pat yourself on the back. Bless your heart that you came on Sunday morning. But are you hungry for him? Praise God. Are you eating of the poison fruit? Are you eating like Eve did of that poison? Praise God. There's many today that's being poisoned and don't even know it. Just like that one I told you in Russia. You can see it in the flesh. You say you're the judge. No. But God gives me eyes to know where the fruit's at. And you can be able to look and you can tell they're being poisoned, Brother Donnie. You see it come on the outside. Praise God. they only going to look like that if they've been poisoned. Guess what? If you'd have looked at me in 1999, Brother Mike, and you'd have been a man of God, you'd have said, he's poisoned. Look at him. Look at his body. Look what's hanging off of him. He's poisoned by this world. Trying to do what the world tells him to do. There was death in that pot too. But you know what? There was a man of God that got up and he preached and told me. He didn't say there was death in the pot, but he pretty much did. He said I was going to die in my sins and I couldn't go to heaven. And you know what? I thank God for that. I thank God that somebody will stand up with the backbone and say there's death in the pot. There's death in the pot. And can you imagine all those that Jim Jones talked them in? I'm sure if he'd have come to him in the very beginning and said, I'm going to be the leader of you. I'm going to be your ruler. We're going to go to another country, maybe Africa. And I'm going to be the one that tells you everything to do. They'd have said, I'm getting out of that nonsense. But he didn't do that. Just slowly. Just slowly. Hey, that enemy, he's subtle. He knows how to slowly do it, don't he? I believe in my heart. If they'd have been able to eat this, praise God, they'd have been dead. The next time they'd have went back and done it. If everybody just sits around and keeps eating dead, somebody's going to die, friend. Praise the Lord. But when somebody stands up and says, stop eating that. Stop feeding that. There's death and that's going to kill you. Hey, that's what the world don't want to hear, don't it? You know what? If I keep preaching the truth here, the numbers will keep getting smaller. That's the way it's going to be. That's the way it is everywhere. Nobody wants to hear the truth, friend. The truth is that Jesus is coming back for a church without spot and without blemish. You say, can you do that by yourself? No, 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 no. I can't do it, friend. Not without the Lord Jesus Christ by my side. I can't live a perfect sinless life. I've got to call on the Lord. And when he tells me there's death in the pot, I've got to have ears to hear. I've got to have ears to hear. So what did Jim say? I believe that maybe if I read this correctly, that they did a trial run a couple of times. They, and I know this other, other time people did that. They did a trial run. They said, here, drink this. Drink this. They did trial runs leading up to the finally the time when they drank it and died, friend. And the poison keeps getting stronger. Glory to his name. The poison in 1950 was pretty bad. I'm sure of that. I, I know that. I'm not taking away from that. Sin is sin. But it seems like in my mind, if I begin to look back in the history books, the poison's getting stronger. The poison's getting stronger, friend. And it's going to kill you. It's going to kill those that dabble in it. Uh, there's things that maybe uh, people do today. When I was a young man, if people done it, they didn't die from it. But now they got it fixed up so much. Praise God, when they do it one time, it kills them. There's poison in that dope, friend. There's poison in that bottle. There's poison in sin today. Oh, Lord, but I'm glad there's somebody. I'm glad somebody finally stood up and said, Hey, there's something wrong with this. The world wants to season it. You know what I like to do when I get my stuff to eat? I like to season it myself. My wife's a great cook, but every once in a while I like to put a little bit of salt on something. I like to put a little pepper on something. I don't want her to do that. I do that myself. And you know what would be wrong? If you let this world season, praise God, what you're doing, they're going to feed you something ain't no good for you. I like to season it myself, don't you? I like to season it with some tears tonight. I like to season it with some anointing tonight and ask God to help us. Oh, Lord. <laughs> don't you let nobody else season your food. 
That don't usually work out well. If I begin to season what my wife's going to eat, she may say, hey, that don't taste right. That's got too much salt. That's got too much pepper. God will season it just right. This man said, hey, that looks good. But if I could just add one thing to it. You know, that's what the world's telling you. I'm glad you're going to church. I'm so glad to work beside a Christian. I'm so glad to live beside a Christian. But if you let me just give you a little bit of advice. Let me season that up for you just a little bit. You don't have to go on Wednesday night. You don't have to go on Sunday night. As long as you go once, God's satisfied with you. I tell you, the Bible says, He that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Are we hungry? I tell you, I'm not hungry for the death pot of you. I'm not hungry for that pot that's got death in it. Praise God. When Jesus came, I believe he partook of that. Praise the Lord. He had to become sin because of my sin. I know he didn't sin. I know there's no guile found in his mouth. But because of what I did, he had to drink of that bitter cup. He had to drink of that forbidden bitter cup. That sin, that gall that he'd never had in his mouth before. Because of that, friend, glory. Because he accepted that for me, I'm able to go free tonight. He was the one warning them. John was the one warning them. You generation of vipers. You know what he was saying? There's death in your pot. There's death in the way you're living. There's death in the way you're worshiping God. There's only one way to worship him. The Bible says that we can worship Him in spirit and in truth. And if we're not worshiping Him that way, in another place they said you worship, you know not what. As we touched on that this morning. Friend, if there's death in the pot tonight, I pray that you stand up and tell everybody. But you got to do it in the right spirit. If you see somebody going down the wrong path, it's our duty, friend, to tell them. I began to, there was a young man yesterday, we went out to, and was able to go out and eat yesterday, give cards to somebody, give Angie, but anyway, we went out to eat yesterday, and there was this young man, I could tell he was working for a tip, I could tell, I mean, he was just a, a nice young man, and he tried to start small talk, and asked me about football and all this, just trying to, you know, and, and I thought, well, okay, it's the way I work it, if I'm going to listen to you talk to me, you're going to listen to me talking to you, so I waited there at the end, and I said, Lord, please, please give me a way to talk to this man, I want to be able to say something to him. I want to be able to tell him something about you. I don't want to come to a restaurant. I don't want to go to a grocery store, God. Don't let me go nowhere without telling somebody about the Lord. I feel like if I've done that, I've wasted my time. And I looked up and I said, praise the Lord. His name badge said Isaiah. I said, hey, you got a biblical name, don't you? He said, yeah. I said, your mom and daddy give you that biblical name? He said, yeah. I said, well, that's really good. I said, do you know that your relationship with Jesus Christ means more than anything you're thinking about right now? (laughs) He got out of there really quick. But you know what I was trying to tell him? There's death in this pot. In this restaurant, there's death. In this place where everybody's at, there's death, friend. I'm trying to warn him tonight. There's death in your pot, friend. There's death in the audience that you're with. There's death with the friends that you partake in. But I praise God somebody will stand up and say, hey, don't eat no more of that. Call poison control. They'll talk you out of it. They'll tell you what to do to vomit that mess up. You say, that's nasty. I say, God, whatever it takes. God, whatever it takes. As a whoremonger and a drunk, praise God. You know what I wanted to do when I finally come to the Lord? I want all that to be puked out of me. I didn't want no more of that desire in me. And God can do that. Amen. And one said, <laughs> he's death in the pot. What happened to the end right there? Was it not able to eat? <laughs> God is so good. If you read the rest of this story... As the one stood up and said, there's death in the pot. Oh, Elijah didn't say, well, too bad. I fixed it right the first time. I told you how to do it the first time. But no, the old man of God come back and he said, give me some meal. Give me some meal. I'll take care of that. Give me some of that bread of life. Glory. Give me some of that bread of life. I'll take care of the problem. And it's, oh, Lord, he's able to come back. We don't just stop with telling somebody they've done wrong. If God would have just stopped with telling me I'd done wrong, I'd have quit a long time ago. But he's right there to nurture us. He's right there to help us, friend. He said, bring me the meal. Bring me the meal. (laughs) Praise the Lord. And the Bible says as he threw the meal in, somebody stood up and said, there's no more harm in the pot. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to say that after you get saved? That's your testimony. When the man of God comes to you and says there's death in the pot, and after you get saved, you stand up and say there's no more harm. <laughs> there's no more harm. God's healed me of that. Don't it feel good to know God's healed you of that death? God's healed you of that poison that the world has tried to put in you? Look at it, friend. I, I challenge you. If you don't do much this week, go to Walmart. Give yourself about 30 minutes at Walmart. And you go right there and you sit on the inside in case it's raining. You sit on the inside and you watch people go in and out. You people watch. It's all right to do that. Just don't, you don't have to talk to them. Just watch them. Just watch every one of them. You can tell they're poison, friend. I'm not to judge of nobody, but they're poison. I looked at it maybe Friday night. I sat at Walmart over in Kingsport, maybe for about 20 minutes. I began to watch them one by one. 
Every one of them walked out and I said, my, my, Lord, would you touch them? God, would you strengthen that family? I can tell there's death inside of them. They're poisoned for him and they don't even know it. Nobody has got a hold of them. Nobody's got their attention and told them that there's death, that what they're doing is going to kill them, that poison is going to kill them. Just a little bit of poison, I've heard it before. Maybe those that poison people, they'll give them just a little bit and their stomach will start hurting for a couple of days and they'll just keep increasing that and keep increasing that and eventually here at that funeral, they murdered them. That's what the devil would love to do to the church. He'd love to rock us to sleep and murder us with death in the pot. And the bad thing about it is, this was a church event, Glory. This was a church event, my friend. If you read it, these were the sons of the prophets, was it not? This wasn't necessarily out to everybody. This was inside the church. Praise God. Lord, would you help us tonight to have eyes to see? And after that, not only did they have good pottage to eat, but there was a man to come down. I'm about through. Sister Judy, if you want to come. Not only did they have good pottage to eat, but God said, I'm going to give you some bread with that. Hey, I'd like to have some bread in my soup. What about you? I'd like to have some good cornbread with my beans. I like that gravy almost, and also I like some cornbread. And not only did they have soup, but he said, I'm going to give you some bread too. I'm going to give you some corn, some grain. I'm going to fill you up good. But you know what? First of all, they had to realize there was death in what they was eating. Oh, Lord, would you give us eyes to see? She begins to play. There's death in what you're eating, friend. I'd ask God what it is that's before me. You say, I don't understand any of this. You go home and pray. You go home and ask God. Everybody stand tonight, if you will. Oh, Lord, help us tonight to proclaim and to tell everybody there's death in that pot. This world is dying. Look at them. They're destroying themselves from within, fighting and murmurings and all this from within. You go in any big business, there's, there's fighting. One trying to be higher than the other. One trying to be over the other. One trying to be the boss of the other. There's death in everything in this world, friend. But there's life in Jesus Christ. Hey, praise the Lord. When sin is finished, it brings forth what? Death. Praise God. But God come that you may have an abundant life. He wants to give you life and more abundantly, friend. You know how you get that abundant life? It's to realize what you're eating is killing you. What you're digesting is killing you. Whether it's the media, whether it's the movies, praise God, whether it's Hollywood, whatever it is. Whatever it is in this world is killing you. It's killing your witness. It's killing your testimony. Praise God. And it's trying to rob the church of its power. But thank God there's still some. Thank God there's still some that's saying, there's death in that, I'm not eating it. There's death in that bottle, I'm not eating it. There's death in that plate, I'm not eating it, June. I don't care if you fix it for me or not. I don't care if you bring it to me or not. I'm not eating it. There's been very few things in my life that somebody's brought me that I refuse to eat. I was taught as a young man, you eat what's set before you, whether you don't like it or not. That's just what we did. Praise the Lord. But there's been a few things since I've become an adult. And I said, I ain't eating that. I am not eating that. There's something wrong with that. That's going to make me sick. I am not eating that. You know what? I didn't eat it. I say that God give us some taste buds tonight. I say that God give us. My granny said, well, after she got in her 80s, she said, I can't taste nothing. I pray that after you get in your 80s, you can still taste the Spirit of God. I pray that you can still taste and know when something ain't right. I pray that God will show us tonight that there's something that's killing us. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Oh, Lord, we thank you for this little thought tonight, God. Lord, at the, at the church, this happened. Amongst God's people, this happened. Somebody trying to help. They brought something in, and it was killing them. It was hurting them. Maybe not killing them. It was hurting them, and it was going to kill them. The same way sin is. Sin will kill, friend. It'll rob you of your testimony. It'll rob you of your relationship with God. It'll rob you of your relationship with your family. If you, what you're doing tonight ain't working, let me give you some words of advice. There's death in what you're eating. There's death in what you're eating. If you're not satisfied, praise God, with what you got in the spiritual realm, ask God what it is. What's killing my spirit, God? What's killing my faith tonight? This world would love to kill your faith, June. This world would love for you to stay in the house and never come out. But God said, come on out. I'll help you today. God said, come on out. I'll give you strength today. I come to warn you tonight. I'm that one saying there's death in this pot. Please don't go get a bowl. Ain't that how we do it in the kitchen? He said, I want you to get a great pot. I want you to feed a lot of people. 
We go to get our bowls. Sometimes we go get it ourselves. But we're standing in line. I pray if you're staying in line today to gather something in this world, that God would speak to your heart and let you know if you need to be eating that or not. Lord, would you help us? Anybody like to come pray tonight? God, give us eyes to see. Give us a boldness. This is a big pot. He said, go get a great pot. I want you to feed these people. Don't let nobody season your food. Don't let this world season your food. I've been at places before. You know what the first thing they ask you when you sit down to eat? Y'all want a cold beer? No. I want a glass of tea. I want a glass of tea. Don't let nobody tell you what to drink. Don't let nobody tell you what to do, friend. God will give you that instruction tonight. There's death in this world. Are you dabbling in the world tonight? Do you got just a little bit of poison in you? You think it don't hurt? It don't hurt to dabble in the world. I done told you. The church world is dabbling in the world. And the world is dabbling in the church. But God said, seek me with your whole heart. Are you seeking him with your whole heart tonight? Are you seeking him? Above all things, are you seeking the Lord with your whole heart? Does somebody have something rotten set before you? Maybe it's set before you tomorrow. And you know it's coming. I I hate to got you standing. I've had things before that I knew I was going to have to go to. And I was going to have a backbone to say, no, I don't do that. Something I had to go to. Maybe a, a meeting or whatever it was. And I had to stand up and say, no, I don't do that. You know, they get mad at that when you tell them you're not going to partake in what they're partaking in. But I tell you, I'd rather this whole world be mad at me and Jesus to be satisfied with me. Anybody like to come pray? God give you eyes to see. Eyes to see. Do you know somebody that's eating death? This malice, this greed, this anger, this jealousy, there's death in that. Just a little bit. Jealousy's cooler than the grave. It's just a little bit of this. It's poison, friend. I know when we had COVID, about the whole time, I said, honey, I feel like I got poison in my mouth. This man-made junk is killing me. I feel like I had poison in my mouth. They was trying to poison me, June. Trying to poison a man. The same way this world does. God give us taste buds to know when the world's trying to feed us, something's going to kill us. Anybody like to come pray before we pray? Father in heaven, we come to you tonight thanking you for the mercy and the grace, Lord, that you've given us as a family. We thank you for the warning tonight, the dire warning to stay away from this world. You can be in it, but don't be of it. Praise God. Don't go out running Saturday night and come to church on Sunday. You shouldn't stay at home. Praise God. There's a way that seemeth right, but the end thereof is the ways of death. Lord, help us not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Lord, we love you. We know that we can all be pulled into this. Lord, if you see us eating something that we shouldn't be eating, let somebody proclaim there's death in the pot so that at the end of that we can stand and say, <laughs> there's no harm in this pot. What I'm eating, it ain't going to kill me. It's going to give me life. Lord, there's many people, as Brother Wayne said earlier, they're deceived. They're led astray by false doctrines. But God, help us to see the truth tonight that Jesus bled and died for our sins so that we could go free. God, we love you. We thank you.